the name I was born with is Tanja, which is T-A-N-G-A, -A, Maria Jones. Well, when I first got here, I started working for social services, and I went from social services to libraries, and I became the first black library supervisor. So it's the first time a library had been built, I think, since the 1970s, if I'm not mistaken, or probably even longer than that. Yes, I grew up in a small, small town in North Carolina, and it was called Blaine Barrel. Still there, one traffic light, we used to laugh about it, you only had one traffic light in the whole town. Well, I was born in 1956, so by the time I started school, we were still segregated, blacks and white. It was a place where slaves were also sold in the 1800s because the, the market is still there. But what sticks out in my mind the most was the day John F. Kennedy died and I was in school, I was in the second grade. And the principal announced it on the TV, um, on the intercom, and the teachers just went so emotional with, with tears and everything stopped because it was someone they looked up to, someone they thought was there to fight for the blacks in that time. And then it was a time where you were integrated into the white schools and it wasn't mandatory. But I was about eight, and my mom came and asked me, because my mom always wanted us to make our own decisions. I said I wanted to go to the white school, and she wanted to know why, and I said, well, if I'm an A student in the black school, shouldn't I be an A student? And I, I quite enjoyed it. I was terrified at first. It was only me and um, two other black kids in the class, and the, the white kids began to see that they're just a different color but they do and like the same things I like. And I really began to enjoy going to the school and interacting with other kids not of my race. Some became my best friends and still are today. I became the first black chief cheerleader trying out to, um, when I was told by others that I wouldn't make it because I was black. And I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced until I got it all right and I got the highest points. My granddad owned a farm. My grandmother had a small farm. And as kids, we had to work on the farms and work in the fields, to picking tobacco and wrapping it around and putting it on this long rack and taking it into my granddad's loft. So he had, he owned land, so people worked for him in those days. The chickens and well water and a horse and, and pigs, cows. So I thought it was kind of neat because all the food and everything you ate was so fresh. Holiday down in South Carolina, down by the beach. Lovely beach, loved it. You know, nothing but music. You walk down, as soon as you get there, we'd be so excited, you know. My dad had the station wagon, pack all the kids in there, and my aunt had a beach house at the beach. It was just this long road of just sand. Motels, hotels, really shacks of places where you could go eat, music, and you, was, you just ran down to the beach and you got in the water and you played. We had a band when we was growing up as kids and I, I did a little bit singing then, but I did more dancing then and my mom was our manager and my brothers and my brother-in-law, we all formed a band and, and you know played in these little small juke junk places. And I've always loved music. 10 or 11 I lost my dad because he was a diabetic and then my mom died probably about two or three years later in a car accident. My husband, we were high school sweethearts, he played football and basketball and I was a cheerleader. Um, well, we have three kids together and we got married in the military and that changed my life even more because I met so many people from so many different parts of the world and that, I think that gave me the beginning of the entrance of coming to Europe. It, it was really funny because when we moved there, it was a small detachment in Dolm in Germany. I was there for like one or two weeks and we were still staying in a hotel. And I had friends that were um, living close to Holland. And so I contacted them and said I was there. I want a ticket to go to, the, to where they were. Everybody else on the camp wanted to know who's this family with the wife it's only been here for two weeks and want to travel and she can't even speak the language, you know. But I got my interpreter to give me the words and how you say 
you know, just stop, and that stop, and get off. And I did it, and I went, and I, you know, and they, everybody was amazed, who's this person? Because that was the way I was taught, that nothing can stop me. I played in a 15-piece band, and we did all the Motown stuff. The Germans actually loved it. You know, we went to Berlin to play, we went to see the Holland to play, and I enjoyed Germany. Um, for such a long time, even though, you know, my husband and I separated and I stayed on. And then I met my present husband there, who's from Bristol. And then my husband and I, um, he was doing it professionally. So again, I was doing backup with him, dancing with him, you know. And we got to do, even though the music was pop and not really what I really wanted to do, but the fact that we were uh, part of groups where we were on the bill with UB40s on that bill. Phil Collins, you know, and backstage, and you think it's Phil Collins. And it was just amazing. It was such a high to be a part of that music scene and have a car come and pick you up and you're signing autographs. It's what I found fascinating about coming to England and Bristol, especially. There were people that I would have never saw in America in my time. You know, there wasn't any. There was only black and white. There's no Africans. There was no Jamaicans. Nobody from the West Indies. Not a Chinese person or Asian or Pakistan, where I grew up. Not like what the kids have today. They have a mixture of people, of culture, to learn from. I thought I could have never, ever gotten a better history lesson than I have living here. In 2007, I worked on the abolition 200, so they wanted to commemorate 200 years since they abolished the slave trade, not slavery. That was a learning curve. That opened up so many doors. That opened up such a vision of, wow, now I understand what the African Caribbeans who live here, what they're going through. Then I began to see the city in their eyes, where there's nothing here that projects that black people ever lived in, in this city. There's no statues, there's no recognition. Um, it's all about cost and, and that kind of a thing. And I think here in this city, they're still suffering because they don't know how to move on. They don't have enough mentors here from the African Caribbean that, that are, are thriving off of the big businesses to look up to, to give them hope that they have a chance. And I think that was the difference with the Americans. We had the Martin Luther Kings, and we had Malcolm X, and we had Rosa Parks, and we have a black president. Where well, that's not here. My future for Bristol is that one day, and I'm sure it will happen, because when I look around now and I see young people who don't have images of hate in their hearts or being abused as a black person, and even the ones that do have the images of being abused, whether they were stopped by the police or whether they were refused jobs or refused housing because of the color of their skin, that they were too fight to overcome and make a better place. Bristol is a multicultural city, but I also hope that the government and the council would continue to do something about it by making the change. And for my own future, um, I hope to be around long enough to see that change and to continue to contribute as much of myself uh, to the community, to encourage people to not give up. For me, I feel that that's not just a job, that's a right <laughs> and a duty as a person to uh, portray that image of um, I'm proud of who I am and walk with pride and pass that on to the young people, that they too can do the same thing and become whoever they want to be. Have a dream. Because if you, without a dream, yeah, where would we be? If we don't have a dream, then we won't know what direction we want to go in. And we won't have something to fight for and to look forward to. <laughs>